everyone, and thank you very much for taking the time, and thank you for inviting me. Today, I want to talk about two things, about trust and about trade. And I want to give you a little bit of background of that. Uh, humans have been trading since forever, and they started trading in communities. So you have small communities trading local things uh, amongst each other. And when you think about the trust in that community, the trust was embedded in that community. Being part of the community was the key to be trusted. And the community itself was the judge of the trust itself. So it was very easy to trade. But then, of course, community became bigger and larger. And therefore, trade became international, overseas. You started to have different communities trading amongst each other. And therefore, you need to have a different structure for trade. You need to create institutions that enable you to actually safely trade and exchange values and goods amongst different parties and regions of the world. So you start to have institutions like governments, banks, exchanges, currency, and all sorts of technologies that today are not seen as technology, but effectively the work. Think about something like money or currency were a breakthrough in their time, even if now this seems like a relic from the past. Another important element of trade is transparency. How transparent are the goods that you trade? Again, if you think about communities, it was pretty easy to see the people working the, an item over there or someone fishing something over there was very well connected with, the, with uh, what they were working on and you could, it was very easy for you to see where the things come from. But what about in global trade? Now, you know, we take for granted, but every single item we buy or we purchase is extremely complex. Everything has a lot of components made of a lot of materials that come from different countries, work in multiple factories, by different corporations, by multiple individuals. So if you think of everything in this room has been manufactured and traveled across the world, that could have been done because, of course, supply chains become global, commerce becomes global, and now you ended up with the goods that go around the world multiple times before entering in your pocket or in your, in your home. With that problem, you have the problem of traceability. How do you make sure that you know what you're handling? How do you make sure that something is real, that something is legitimate, that something comes from a sustainable source? So again, traceability is as becoming a challenge because again, you're starting to, to map multiple companies, system, things that travel by plane, by freight, by sea. So it's very complex for an organization or an individual to have a full transparency and visibility around the things you're dealing with. So organizations tend to have traceability technology everywhere, but they were mainly started for operational efficiency, making sure that you, know, you manage everything tightly, that you understand, that you're able to audit, that you're able to show, but fundamentally were used for internal purposes. There is a big trend now that every one of us are contributing. We, as individuals, are becoming more powerful than ever, and we're just witnesses to to example, so now we're able to create our own nation, we're able to inform, inform our policies. We are able, as individuals, to challenge the status quo. We, as a consumer, can challenge a corporation on Twitter. We, as a consumer, can raise our voice and amplify using social network, etc. So there is a, a powerful shift, and that shift has bring transparency to a new level. Transparency is not now a communication gimmick, it's becoming a priority. A corporation, a government must be more transparent than ever because it's becoming a priority for their consumer, for their citizen, and for their users. And this has been possible by the advent of technologies. Again, we live in a world where technology is everywhere. There is probably more computational power in this room that there was at the NASA center where the Apollo mission was launched. But we tend to forget that. We tend to have things for granted, screens everywhere, sensors everywhere. We probably carry more sensors in our small phone today than a plant had 10 years ago. So we had the, the chance to live in a world where we witnessed four revolutions in the technology space, and the fifth is the one we're talking here today. The fourth were the internet, of course, in the UK, everyone knows the web. The web enabled everyone everywhere to exchange information freely. 
this was a breakthrough at the time, connecting everyone and may, may be making exchanges available for free, effectively. Then you had smartphone. Again, smartphone is just 10 years old. We just, uh, get, again, get used to it and can't even imagine how the old phone worked, but it's just 10 years. And the smartphone basically give us the ability to access information everywhere, anywhere, anytime. So we can exchange information, we can access information. Then there is one other revolution going on, which is IoT. IoT is, uh, you know, as everyone might heard, we're, gonna, we're waiting to have 20 billion devices connected everywhere. Different sizes, different purposes. We're gonna have devices and sensors inside ourselves. It's gonna be everywhere. And what IoT actually means is that for the first time, you'll be able to map the world in a different way. You will be able to capture information in a different way. So we can exchange information, we can access information, and we can capture information in a way that wasn't available before. And then, of course, we have AI. AI is everywhere. AI is going to have a huge impact in the world. But what AI does is effectively making sense of all that information. So the quantity of data and information is exploding. The way to capturing is fairly new. The way to access is very new. And the way to exchange is very new. But there is an element P that is missing. And this element is trust. How do you trust all that information? How do you navigate all that information? How do you know what you can rely on? We live in a world where despite having all these technologies, there is three billion smartphones in the world, there is broadband connection uh, almost in all um, ma major countries in the world. You're gonna start to have infrastructure that are decentralized that enable people to access information. But despite this incredible technology advancement, you still have fraud, you still have counterfeit, you still have uh, fake news, you still have uh, malicious information and way to manipulate information, to manipulate perhaps you know, a policy or regu uh, regulatory environment or even to uh, trick people. So what we were missing was effectively a ledger of trust. We believe that blockchain will become that layer of trust that will help everyone, every industry, every individual, every corporation to understand what information is correct and what information is wrong. Making sure to understand which information you can rely upon and which you should discard. Because even if you have access to all the information in the world, you still and we still spend a lot of time trying to understand what is real, what is not. If you think about trade, most of the uh, authenticity, most of the um, transparency, most of the procedures around tracking and trace of goods, it's still paper. <coughs> paper is, you have millions of documents that are created every day in the world just to make sure that what I give you is exactly what I said it is. You have people spending a lot of time reconciling databases because in a supply chain environment, people don't share information. So people spend a lot of time and a lot of money, a lot of energy trying to make sure that what I shipped is actually what you received and what uh, you bought is exactly what it was. And you think about an environment where now you're moving more and more to the digital environment, you will have to trust entities that are not physical. When you buy something online, you basically buy on the, pre on the promise that you will get what you want. But there is always a physical element of that trust. If you think about last time you bought something on a shop, you basically walked in, you got something, you walk back with an item, some sort of certification or paper that says, yes, it's exactly what you wanted, and then a receipt that actually gives you the proof of ownership. But those three things are paper. You can lose it, you can move house and forget it, or you actually can't find it where you need it. So trust in trade is still very much into paper. And the problem with that is that provenance cannot be reliable if it's just in paper. As we just heard in these two days of conference, the world is going too fast to search for paper. So we need to find new way to embed trust into transaction to embed trust into the processes, to embed trust 
in a way that is decentralized, where we as individuals, we as companies, we as citizens are able to have our own certainty around what we're dealing with. So we believe that the blockchain will effectively do what the internet did to information, so it will add a new layer, it will transform the way we exchange value and exchange information by providing a ledger of trust. And I just wanted to close on, on a small remark because you asked for, for a bold uh, prediction. As I said, you know, I just mentioned four technology revolutions, internet, smartphones, IoT, and AI. Those four revolutions are very visible to us. We have a phone in our hand, we have a computer at home, we connect on Wi-Fi, we can see suggestion based on our behavior. So those four technologies are very, very visible. We have an impact on our life and to a certain extent they change our behavior. Blockchain will have a different story. Blockchain will be a technology revolution, but blockchain will be invisible. It will be ubiquitous, but invisible. You, as a citizen, as a consumer, as a professional, won't accept in the future an information which is not trusted, but at the same time, you won't have a physical element where this trusted would be done because trust would trust would be decentralized, would be in everywhere, it would be everywhere, would be ubiquitous, but again it would be not visible. So it's a very different type of revolution, but it's a very profound revolution. Because as the internet did 20 years ago, it will completely transform the way we as citizen, consumer and companies operate and on the way how the, and the way the world is run both from a policy element, a business element, and a technological element. Thank you very much.